Okay. Hi, Michael. Hi, Marielle. Hi. You're all the way down in California. I am. It's very snowy here. Amazing. We've had lots of snow up here, and it's snowing again today, but we did have sun earlier, so at least the snow melted off the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> What do we want to talk about, talk about today? Well, um, looking at some questions that came in regarding the upcoming course, the Transcending Anxiety course, and just thought we could have a little chat about that and see if um, we can open up a little bit of a better understanding as to what the offering's all about. Great, I'd love to do that. Great. What, what were some of the questions that you had? Well, I think I wanted to start right kind of at the beginning and just looking at, at you know, stress, like what is stress? We, I know we all have some forms of stress and it comes and it goes and some of it is beneficial. We need some stress. It gets us out of bed in the morning and off to work and, and um, it can help us in dangerous situations, you know, to get the, the reactions moving. And so we need some stress. And then normally the body has a chance to recuperate after that stress moment. We have a chance to kind of come back, the chemicals settle down again, and we come back into kind of a state of homeostasis or, you know, relaxation again. The body's in the normal state. And then there's anxiety, which is like sort of a more when we have stress that just is continual. It doesn't go away. And maybe over a longer period of time, we end up with an anxiety that might for me, it felt like when I'm in it, when I had anxiety, it felt like a, a kind of an underlying sort of a constant state of stress that would sort of flare maybe at moments it would flare and different fears would come up um, and still do. But it's, it's more like a, a, a kind of an underlying long term stress that's more mm -hmm. difficult to kind of see where it comes from sometimes like what's yeah. where does this fear come from or you know why am i constantly nervous about speaking to people or um you know all the all the different things that anxiety can be related to and then deeper than that is depression where you know there's a couple of weeks where we just can't even get out of bed or we're so tired we just can't imagine facing the day that we have to to wake up to so um yeah just kind of looking right back at the beginning like why are, why are you offering this course in the first place <laughs> well a lot of questions in what you said um let's just take the first part about what is stress and uh, i could give you a lot of um dictionary definitions and and get into talking about the uh, fight, flight, or freeze syndrome of the reptilian brain. But I, to simplify it, I want to say that stress is a road sign. It's a signal that our current way of being is inadequate to meet the challenges of the commitments that we now have. So, uh, you know, we get frozen uh, in, and, and a lot of that comes from our need to get it right, our need for certainty, which is a product of the um, mechanistic worldview that unfortunately we are very much inside of. And the mechanistic worldview comes from the 17th century, Descartes and Newton, which basically says that we are all separate and we are, in, uh, we are objects in a world of objects. And that's been plaguing us and keeping of us in a prison of trying to get things right, trying to have certainty in our life, trying to know what's going to happen next. And so we spend a lot of time planning and trying to get it right. And that creates an amazing amount of stress. And that's the need for certainty that comes from an objective, uh, predictable world. We have that assumption that there is some such a thing, but the world is very messy and chaotic. And the new quantum view, as well as what the indigenous uh, mystics and shamans have been saying all along is that there 
is no certainty in the world that the myth of objectivity uh, at best is a guess of predictability, but it creates a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. Um, and it takes us out of the moment. It takes us from being right in the present time. And we miss the flow of potentiality. So many of the um, areas that I've, I come, you know, uh, Mel comes from more of the traditional science and cognitive. I, I really come out of the mystical, mystical traditions. Mm -hmm. But the, they really say what quantum physics over the last hundred years has been proving. In other words, um, you know, the mystics say that everything is connected to everything else and, and impacts everything else. And that, you know, what you do to the earth, you do to yourself and the water and such as that. Well, the principle of inseparability is one of the main principles of uh, quantum physics. And it's saying the same thing, that everything affects everything else. And so there's this vast world of potentiality that exists in that. And um, there, there's that uncertainty is a principle. The, the mystics have always said that we have this vast array of reality that we can choose from. Uh, you know, that we don't, we aren't stuck with this limited view. There are many worlds that we can visit to inform ourselves. So one of the principles that comes from that model, whether it's from the mystical tradition or from quantum physics is learning how to embrace uncertainty. Well, if we're trying to get it right all the time, that's kind of difficult to embrace uncertainty. But what opens up when we actually do that? Suddenly we become, first of all, in a state of acute presence. We bring ourselves into a state of presence, a state of wonder, a state of curiosity, a state of awe, a, a place where our natural inner allurement can find what the soul is really trying to express and accomplish in this world, instead of all the things we think we should from the beliefs that we've gotten. Which brings us to another aspect of that, um, a thing called uh, wave collapse. So in shamanism, we have soul loss. The counterpart of soul loss would be wave collapse. Wave collapse is when we go from the field of wave of pure unfolding potential into observing the observer effect, uh, then we name it, we observe it, we freeze it into a belief on a cognitive level. And those beliefs create the way we perceive the world, which gives us our worldview, which is one of the reasons it's very hard to shift from the mechanistic view to the quantum view. So I want to ask a question here. Yes, can, sure. Can, can you give me an example? Because that sounded a little bit complicated to me. And I just want to have an example of what that means sure. for like somebody like me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's say that um, um, you, you have uh, that, that your parents aren't there when you're young and you really have needs that be fulfilled but they're off working and they're not available. We might form a, a, a belief that I'm un, un, unloved. It could be that our parents are out trying to make a living so they can feed us and support us and send us to college. Right. But we make the choice at that point that I must be unlovable because they're not here. That is a wave collapse. It's also how we have soul loss. Soul loss means that part of our essence, our ability to, to be open to love and receive and love others, our ability to be creative. Um, wow, the snow is just coming down like crazy again. Um, so our ability to uh, create possibilities yeah. um, uh, get limited when we name something, we choose something. We have a wave collapse, we have a soul uh, loss. So the so, story that we make 
about it in your in some of I've heard you speak before in in some of your past courses about story that create that we create a story. Yeah. So this wave collapse is a story that we've created, and this is using a different language now, quantum language. Yeah, it's not actually that we create a story. It's more like a story creates us, uh -huh. and and the character in the story. We, we don't recognize that we're a character in our own story. And so, you know, so much suffering comes from not being able to separate ourselves from our story. What is our story? Our story is beliefs and experiences and how we view the world from the past. Mm -hmm. You could say that for the most part, we, leave our, we, li we aren't living into the future. We're living into the past being recreated over and over again. So combining the mystical traditions with the uh, quantum uh, world, we begin to examine the beliefs. What's, what's, what's true? What are other possible? Like I said, it could be possible that our parents are working very hard because they care so much about us. They want to send us to college. They want to have a good life for us. And they don't realize the impact of their not being available. Mm -hmm. And we end up in loops, like kind of like a computer default uh, that keeps. It's exa around. exactly like that. Yeah, exactly. Now I, I found it interesting that you chose to work with Mel Mel Schwartz. He's a mm -hmm. psychotherapist and a marriage counselor, um, and coming from a different, a very different aspect. Um, like you said earlier, uh, you're being more working more with the mystical traditions and shamanism and. Also, you came out of an organizational development background. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose to, to work with Mel? And, and Sure. Uh, Mel is a brilliant psychotherapist, and he's put these principles into action in his therapeutic work and produ produced miraculous um, results with that. Uh, there, you know, we have this idea that somehow there's this mind-body uh, heart split, which is completely inaccurate. There's no split here. I'm all here, right here now in front of you. I have my head and I have my heart. But there's a tendency, some of us are much more cerebral. You know, I kind of started out that way, but more and more have been speaking about the heart resonance. Um, and you need both of them. And so I, I really respect Mel's ability to. Um, to understand how people get trapped in these um, uh, wave collapses, what we call soul loss, and how to, by observing them and rethinking through them and looking at more alternatives, we can go there. So I, I love the balance that we have. It's not that I don't have a head, but my work more comes from the heart and the body, and Mel's more comes from the head. And uh, I think it's a really great combination. I'm really excited about this course because yeah. I'm looking forward to what I can learn from Mel. And I think he's also looking forward to what he can learn from me about uh, presence and about um, the kind of work that we've been doing all along with belief change uh, uh, work and meditation and that deepening into the inner interiority and uh, opening up our natural ability to express ourselves and our, say, soul's calling into the world and to remove some of the constraints that keep us from living up to our highest potential and offering our gifts, our strengths, and our talents fully to the world without holding back. Mm. The, other, the other aspect to the course is that it will be on this platform, a Zoom platform. And as we've experienced in, in our past work together, having the group and being able to see each other and learn from all the people that are in the group, the community that, that forms uh, with the people who come in as students but end up being co co-creators uh, in the process is really yeah. and powerful. Yeah, we, we did that in the path of the heart and it was so incredible. And yeah. all of those people we feel very close with, they're with us all the time. So this is an opportunity for people to really get a personal experience of um, this interaction 
with the community. And, and, and that's another aspect, and I have to leave in a minute here, but I wanna say that's another aspect that's really important in healing the wounds of separation. Um, you know, I've often said to people that the suffering that we have in our lives is in, in almost all cases, a function of the myth of separation, not recognizing our interconnectedness with our body, with nature, with each other, and with the community. And when we get in a community field and people are authentically sharing themselves, what we discover is, oh, that's like, I have that same or a slightly different thing. And I get inspired when I see another people, another person taking on a new perspective or a new belief or a new way of holding what was currently an indelible prison of reality. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. I just want to ask before you go, I just want to maybe talk a little bit about what type of practice, like what kind of practices you'll be offering, you and Mel will be offering. What, what is the actual meat part of it look like? Like, how are we going to be experimenting and, and expanding? Right. Well, the fundamental practice is inquiry, is really looking to see and notice the uh, limiting beliefs and behaviors uh, that lead us to be uh, experiencing stress and anxiety and even depression and fear also. And so within that, I'll be doing a whole series of taking us deeper and deeper into a meditative state in the beginning so that we can deepen from surface consciousness down to the deep inner consciousness of, of exploring our own interiority and recognizing the permeability of the, the self as body into the outer external world, which taps us into a vast um, intuitive and uh, spiritual consciousness uh, of the silence itself. We'll be doing a lot of exercise with people to, um, to notice the limiting beliefs that we have and to help us to step out of the old mechanistic paradigm and see how language and uh, the way we operate in the world and work in the world uh, allows us to step into a new freedom to be authentic and at the same time expand our capacity to meet the demands that we set on ourselves. Because again, I'm saying that Stress and anxiety are a function, simply a function, a sign that says, hey, you right now are operating at a smaller, less uh, available state of consciousness to meet the challenge you've set up for yourself and the challenge of the world. Therefore, the, the cure of that is expanding our own uh, level of consciousness and evolving into a place where we can hold more uh, in our life and relax into it, regardless of the circumstances outside. This is still working with the path of direct revelation, which has always been what I'm doing, as well as looking how to dissolve the barriers of the myth of separation. That's great. I love the the word you used, cure because I feel like it's, it's a key. There's an offering that's provided. There's like a pathway that opens and then it's up to us to, to participate to the best of our yeah. ability. So. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get on another call right now, but maybe we could do another one of these little chats. Um, uh, Thank you. You know, in the, in the near future. Great. Thank okay. you for taking the time and explaining some of these things for us. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm looking forward to uh, having those of you who were called to join us. Uh, many blessings. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.